All right. What is going on, folks? It is Friday, and uh, welcome to uh, the live stream. What is going on? What was that? Oh, my gosh. Anyway, um, we are uh, we are here. It's live. And uh, the topic of today's video is how to get more customers in the winter. We are starting to hear. Um, no, thank you. Uh, we're starting to see, um, starting to hear and see from guys that, you know, it's, it's getting towards the end of their season. Things are starting to get a little chillier. Maybe they're starting to see a slowdown in some of their business and, uh, they're, they're getting concerned. They're getting worried. They're thinking about what is next. What are we going to do during the slower months, during the off season to generate income? And while I know that there are a tremendous amount of people that, um, you know, they, they plan ahead for this. And when you've been in the business for longer amounts of time, you know, and you understand how cyclical this business can be depending on where you are, uh, you know, located with all of that being said, uh, a lot of folks will, uh, charge more during the season and they are strategic about spending money, about allocating money to various places, savings, and, uh, and, and, you know, for the slower times. So, you know, those are some of the things that we are talking about and, uh, thinking about when we're doing our, um, you know, our planning for the winter. And so if you guys are in here and you've got any questions regarding, uh, your business, your service-based business, whether it's pressure washing, window cleaning, lawn care, whatever the case is, please, by all means, uh, you know, jump in and let us know. And I would love to hear from you guys. And I may have picked a horrible time to go live. But we, we've got one comment from Pressure Wash Punks that says, thanks for doing these lives, Mike. We appreciate you. Uh, you got it. And uh, it's funny to see you guys in here uh, being nice because typically you're not very nice. One of the things that a lot of people do during the winter uh, is, and, and it's actually, it's time to start doing that now and preparing for this now is... Uh, Christmas lighting, right? A, a lot of people will think, yeah, you know, I want to do that. That sounds like a great, uh, a great little uh, service to get into a nice niche that's probably underserviced in a lot of markets. And with that being said, this is the time to start marketing for the lighting. It's the time to start learning how to do it. It's the time to start getting all of your stuff together so we can go ahead and, um, you know, be prepared for when the calls do start coming in. And, uh, you know, now is the time we have been, uh, preparing for Christmas lighting for about two months with various flyers, uh, ads, both on Google and Facebook. And, uh, and we have started to accumulate, uh, several jobs that we will start, uh, getting, you know, installed here shortly. I paid $2,800 last year. I paid $2,800 last year for Christmas lights, huge untapped market for the off season. Absolutely. That is Cody with Southeast Softwash. What's up, buddy? Um, and then there's Hedo uh, from Vancouver. Good morning. And, uh, but yeah, so the Christmas light market is severely underserved in my opinion. Now, I think if you get into some major metropolitan areas, you are going to see a lot more services uh, like this that are out there and promoting, even in an area like mine, we are seeing, um, a, uh, um, we're seeing a lot more people getting into it. Um, and there's a reason for that because it is highly profitable. It is a very short season. You're looking from basically the beginning of November when a lot of people really start getting out there and doing their installs. And, and that's on residential commercial. They've already started, but, um, you can, uh, you can get started November, December, and then typically January is when people start uh, breaking them down. And with that being said, a very short season, but a highly profitable season. 
and uh, a great business to get into. And if you've got questions about that, I put a link. We uh, we did do a Christmas light boot camp last year with Glenn Jernigan, who's a member of the Inner Circle. He's got a phenomenal uh, wash business. He's also built a hell of a Christmas lighting business. And uh, I think his first season, he did, I think, ten to $15,000, which ain't bad for a couple months, right? And that's with just getting started, just getting your name out there, just allowing people to understand and know that you're offering this service. Over the years, uh, he has picked up some significant commercial accounts, but this guy does 150, probably $200,000 in the season for Christmas lighting every single year. That is a tremendous amount of business. And again, you know, he has built this up over the uh, the last couple of years, but um, it, it's just a testament to the fact that there, the market is there, the market is ripe. And, you know, if you take the initiative and get out there, uh, you can, you can definitely, you know, prevent the winter doldrums, if you will, because, you know, if you're not planning, if you're not, if you don't have a plan in place, if you're not strategizing on what you're going to be doing, then guess what? You're going to be sitting around wondering where the money's coming from if you haven't prepared and have it set aside. So something to think about there. All right. Sydney. Uh, hey, Mike and fellow entrepreneurs. Hope all is well. Uh, everything is well. Everything is going well here. Just wanted to hop on for a couple minutes. Um, and then uh, I'm going to ski daddle. DJM says he's up in Toronto and it's negative two this Sunday. That is unbelievably cold. I just, uh, I just had the uh, heater hooked up for our pool because it's getting super cold. I think the pool was like I want to say it was 69, 70 degrees, which is super, super chilly and uh, not anywhere that I'm going to be hopping in anytime soon. Although <laughs> the ice bath thing is is pretty legit. Uh, my wife and I jumped in the other day after a, uh, a workout and it did feel unbelievably refreshing and soothing at the same time, but also ridiculously cold. So um, I'm not a, not sure about all those polar plungers and you know, ice bath people, but it was, it was something to try. All right. Time to bring out the snowblower. Fortunately, we don't have snow or snow blowers. So I'm, I'm very fortunate there. All right. Let's see what else do we have here? All right. We do not have a tremendous amount of activity in the comments. Um, so we'll open it up to anything. If you've got any questions about the marketing of your business, uh, equipment, uh, equipment issues, where to get your equipment, what chemicals to use, all of these things. Um, I am here and I can answer them. Uh, and if not, I can probably uh, get the answer for you very quickly. But um, that is it. Okay remove you. All right. All right. Well, not a lot of activity. So I guess I will be checking out. Uh, do we also do concrete ceiling or just the wash? We do not offer concrete ceiling. That is not something that is really um, big in our market. Uh, we simply do the old wash and, uh, and rinse, do a little pre-treatment and be on our way. And hopefully, you know, in the next Six to 12 months, we will be back on their schedule. What's up, James Bass? What was the good news? Hopefully a huge job. I've actually done a bunch of big quotes over the past. This week, we've actually done a bunch of huge quotes. Um, we did a $1.2 million warehouse exterior cleaning. We also did a 
250,000 square foot warehouse cleaning. Both of them are owned by the same company. Um, and uh, we, oh, my big $48,500 check in the mail this morning. That is great news. Dude, I got one the other day for $31,000. I deposited it into my, one of my business accounts and it got put on hold because they were saying that because it was from a different bank, they were verifying just a whole thing. Uh, 50, I, I put it in, I think on the 14th and it's, what is it? The 20th? I don't even know what the date is, but like, come on, just transfer the money. But a bunch of huge uh, quotes we did. Um, let me think. Probably about $120,000 worth of quotes this week. And uh, the, the, the crazy thing is, is, it sounds to me like most those three that we did want to have everything done by the end of the year. So that would be absolutely outstanding. Um, heck yeah. Smiling all the way to the bank for a few minutes. I would say so. That is a big payday. Um, Arizona Shine Pro Wash. I'm assuming that's what the AZ is. Last year uh, did residential only. How to get commercial Christmas light customers? You know, that's a great question. And I would probably say that, you know, getting commercial, any commercial accounts, it's the same regardless of um, Biden out there holding on to your money, right? Um, getting commercial accounts, it's about you know, tenacity. It's about follow-up. It's about follow through. It's about getting in front of the right people, knowing maybe it's knowing the right people or finding out who the right people are to talk to. Um, you know, commercial accounts are, are one of the, one of the more difficult things, uh, for a lot of people to kind of figure out how to navigate to the decision makers. Now, one way is, you do your part as far as your SEO, you do, uh, you know, have a great website and, and you've got, you know, multiple, um, means to drive traffic to your website, which obviously then helps your, uh, Google business profile, because that's where most people are going to look. So if you don't know anybody, you have to do the work in order to get the eyeballs in, you know, on, on your business. Um, man I dealt with called me this morning too. But um, what was I going to say? Told me he is recommending me to their corporate offices for more work in multiple states. See, that is great. And when you do a good job, when you, when you deliver on, on what you say you're going to do, people like to deal with people like that. People like to recommend people like that. Uh, it's just human nature. And so, uh, you know, obviously following up with these guys after the job is done, making sure everything looks good, you know, blah, blah, blah. All of the things that you're supposed to do are important, but obviously delivering on the service that you're providing is absolutely key as well. So interesting um, concept as far as, uh, you know, getting, Commercial accounts, um, commercial accounts. Uh, I would go to every single place where you think that they are going to be doing Christmas lighting, shopping centers, uh, schools, uh, neighborhoods, uh, apartment communities, maybe, but I think hospitals, things like that, big, big places with lots of people, they are definitely going to have Christmas lights. Shopping centers is another great one. And, you know, it's just like with the, um, just like with pressure washing, you got to find out who to talk to at shopping centers. I always look for a lease sign, right? Whoever's leasing it is probably managing it. And there's probably going to be a vacancy or, or some means of contacting somebody about, you know, getting in there. And uh, those are the people where I start with go to the individual shops and ask who it is that you need to talk to because you'd like to do X, Y, or Z, whatever the service is. And a lot of times they're going to point you in the right direction. Um, my cousin is in local politics, may be able to get him to refer me. Yeah, that's great. Um, is it harder than residential? No, I mean, it, it might be larger, but it's not harder. Uh, but again, you know, it just depends on, on the scope of work and, and what they're all looking. And I just, I'm actually getting, okay. Um, he was all smiles when we walked to property with him after and I finished up the work. Yeah. And that is a great, anytime you got a customer that's happy, that is absolutely outstanding. I actually just had a, um, uh, an experience <laughs> with an unhappy customer this week. And it was kind of an odd one. The lady called, um, she got an estimate for a roof blow off, a house wash, a gutter clean out, exterior window cleaning. 
And I want to say it was a $1,200 job, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we go out there, beautiful neighborhood, beautiful home, gated community, gets in, my guy gets there, he does everything, uh, except there was about 25 feet of gutter on the back that was not accessible. Uh, at least it wasn't safely accessible. And, and we don't put um, dollars in front of safety ever. So if it's something that can't be done safely, we just don't do it. We let the customer know. My technician let the customer know. And she, uh, she, he said, yeah, I'm sure Mike will give you a little bit of discount because it was just whatever. So, uh, I, I send the invoice or I guess Mac must've sent the invoice through quote IQ and I get an email back from her saying, Hey, um, your technician said that you were going to give me a discount, um, on this. And I said, I did, it was reflected on the discount. I took off a hundred dollars which $100 was probably a little bit more generous than I uh, normally would have been. But, you know, whatever. It was a, it was a decent job, 1100 bucks. We still made a ton of money. And uh, she, she was like, uh, I thought it would be more than that. And I'm like, well, it was just a very small section, whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> she got angry super fast, started to tell me that she was going to uh, give bad reviews to all of our... Um, give bad reviews to all of uh, her neighbors in, in her neighborhood. And, and it's a nice neighborhood, but at the end of the day, I don't care about a bad review to her neighbors. Right. Because at the end of the day, also, I believe that anybody that is going to be like that has zero credibility with the neighbors. They know who this lady is. They know what type of lady they know who she is. And they're probably going to give zero credence to whatever input she has. I've got neighbors. I can look out and I can see multiple homes where I would never take their advice on anything. I see who they hire. I see, you know, the, the truck after truck after truck coming to give estimates for the same shit. And when I see guys that I know that are over there, I'm like, no, don't do it because it's only going to be a problem. This lady was one of those people. She was only going to be a problem. And I told her, look, pay whatever you want because I'm not quibbling over pennies. Oh, it's pennies. It's a hundred dollars. That's a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, look, you know, just pay what you want and pay your invoice and let's no, let's have no association. But I also texted her back that I wasn't really, um, <laughs> I didn't think that, uh, well, basically what I just told you guys that no one was going to give a damn what she said. And I didn't say it quite like that, but it was still rude. Um, because at this point, like, don't threaten me with, with, reviews, right? Um, it's, it just, it, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, long story short, um, we went back and forth. I, uh, I asked her if, um, she needed to set up a payment plan, which didn't sit well with her. Of course not. We're going to pay full price. And, uh, she ended up paying the invoice obviously, and, uh, apologized to me later for being rude, which, you know, I was equally rude. So I had to, uh, eat some humble pie and, and also apologize but um, God, people are crazy sometimes. It just blows my mind. Okay. Um, there was a huge area, about 3,000 square feet of massive rust strains on the property. I used 50 pounds of O acid to remove it. Damn. Well, dude, you earned the $48,500. Rust removal is, is not one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> hey, Mike, I have a brick house built in 1912, the previous... Uh, homeowners have repainted this house over and over. So there's about seven layers of ancient paint. Any advice on removing the paint? No. Um, we, we, we are not in the paint removal business. We are in the surface pollutant removal business. We remove stains the best that we can. We remove organics. We remove bug debris, all the, you know, the, the surface pollutants. I just had a guy this week said, hey, I need somebody to come and clean the eaves of my two-story home. And it was in a historic district here in Savannah. And so I said, um, I, I looked up the property and I gave him the price. And when I give the price, uh, it generates, you know, the estimate and it's got the nomenclature for a house watch, which is, you know, the low pressure cleaning of all surfaces to remove mold, mildew, and any other surface pollutants that might blah, 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 blah. And he responded back, no, no, I need... Um, you to remove all of the paint because we're painting it. And I told him to call somebody else because we're not in the paint removal business. We do everything we possibly can to not remove paint. Now, if 
he's going to paint the house and he needs it clean, then we can wash it. We can get a little more aggressive, but we're not guaranteeing that it's going to be, you know, ready for paint because the painter is going to have to come in and do some work. And he's like, no, no, I need somebody with a, um, with a turbo nozzle. And I thought, okay, you Googled something, you found turbo nozzle and you want somebody to do a turbo nozzle on a two story house. Like mm, not us, but good luck to you. And I hope you find somebody that can, can, you know, satisfy your needs. But back to this question about, um, paint removal, that's a tough one. If it's seven layers of paint on brick, like even if it was one layer on brick, brick is unbelievably porous. So if they're trying to get this house back to its original brick, I don't think it's ever going to be back to the original brick because that paint has, it dived into the pores in the brick, right? It's like a sponge sucked it up. So while you could spend probably weeks on there, you know, inch by inch blasting away using probably some, you know, paint removers, aircraft paint remover, something like that, like a graffiti remover maybe. But um, man, that is not a job that I would be willing to take on. And it is also something that if I, if, if I was giving advice on it, I would make sure that you really lay out exactly how, um, you know, expectations because their expectations probably aren't going to line up with the des the result that you're going to be able to deliver. And you don't want to oversell anything and under deliver because then you look bad. Even if, you know, you know that it's not going to be perfect. You have to relay all that information. So that's something that I would probably walk away from. Uh, Noah says, any tips on Christmas lights? I would recommend buying the Christmas light boot camp. There is a link for that in the description of this video. Um, check it out great information. It's actually half price right now. So I can't remember how much it is. Super, super, super cheap. Um, we've also created a Christmas light contract that you can use to give to your customers that really kind of just highlights everything that's going to happen and also protects your business um, from, you know, the things that can happen when you're doing Christmas light installs. We've also put together a really great marketing package with templates for uh, bandit signs, door hangers, uh, postcards. What else? Uh, oh, some great Facebook um, ads for either promoting, you know, you're not for promoted, but like promoted boosted posts or running ads, um, as well as the, like the Christmas lighting image with the little Santa Claus and the beautiful house with all the lights and the snow. So definitely check those out. Some great resources there. But in that course, Glenn goes super, super deep into every aspect from the equipment needed, um, the, 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 how to, how to do the lights, how to string the lights, how to wire, how to do ab absolutely everything, where to get them, how to sell them, how to price them, you name it. It's in there. It's stout and it's half price right now. Um, Hi, Mike, uh, 20 years old, just bought my first 24 inch surface cleaner and looking to buy a pressure washer to go with it. Got a few jobs lined up already. Thank you for your help with this journey. Good luck to you. That's interesting. You bought the surface cleaner first. Um, but you know, sometimes you put the uh, cart before the horse, but best of luck to you and uh, hope you crush it. George says, Mike, please advise us fellow family members what to do when getting text messages from a mystery client wanting to pay extra money to pay someone else for them to pay you extra money to pay someone else for them. Mike, please advise us fellow family members what to do when getting text messages from a mystery client wanting to pay you extra money to pay someone else for them. George, I don't know what you're talking about, bud. I read it three times and I'm confused. Uh, I want to know if Quote IQ has a way to send and sign contracts. Well, of course, Quote IQ has a way to send and sign contracts. So you can take your contract, your terms of conditions, whatever it is, you can upload them into the terms and conditions uh, section in the, uh, in the settings. And that will be attached to every estimate that you send. Now, when they either accept or decline your estimate, um, when you send it, because the little thing pops up, they have to sign it. And then it also says, um, by signing this, you are accepting the terms and conditions attached. So that is how we do it in quote IQ. Let's see, Mike, what would you say is a good way to advertise for the business? I put out a couple thousand flyers door to door and honestly had extremely poor response. Need to do better next season. Uh, good question. And I would tell you that uh, if you put out a couple thousand flyers, that's a great start. Put out another couple and then another couple and then another couple and then another couple. And then when you don't have a good response, 
then you figure, oh, maybe my flyer sucked. Repetition is the key to success with all marketing, whether it's email marketing, whether it is, uh, you know, posting on Facebook groups, running ads, uh, you know, your EDDM, all of these things require repetition. And unfortunately, it takes a little bit of money, right? And so you have to be absolutely relentless in every form of your marketing and don't rely on one thing. If you only did flyers and going door to door, you know, good luck. And I hope you get some business, but you got to cast a giant net in order to pull in a bunch of fish. And right now it sounds like maybe you're fishing with a rod. Okay. Any advice for me? I'm 20, starting my business this summer, starting my LLC in the spring. What type of trailer setup should I try to build uh, if I'm in the eight to 12,000 price range? I would get um, the most that you can get for your eight to 12. And when I say that, I mean, if you can swing an eight gallon per minute machine, get yourself a tank, get yourself a hose reel, get yourself a surface cleaner. It sounds like you probably already got some of this stuff since you started the business this summer, but um, you know, maximize your spend, be frugal and be strategic with what you're buying. And uh, that should serve you well. <clears throat> Haha, ha, guy was selling $900 service cleaner and a bunch of attachments for $650. How to jump on the deal? Absolutely. <coughs> um, also wanted to mention you made a short clip saying F the city ordinance about water runoff. I honestly do think it's ridiculous, but I am new to this business, so I'm not really sure. Okay, well, it's not a city ordinance. It is a federal law. It's the Clean Water Act of 1970-something or 60 something. I don't remember. It's an antiquated bill. Uh, it's an antiquated law. And essentially what it says is any water that comes from your driveway, from your property that goes into the street, into the water, potentially into the waterways, it's, it's illegal. So even if you're washing your car by, by the, the statute, you have to contain that water because it's not pure water coming off, right? Because the concrete could be dirty. It could have oil thus getting into the waterway. So, you know, that's my personal opinion. Um, but I've also never heard of anybody getting arrested for um, having water come off their driveway. I will get in trouble or fined. I don't think you will, Morris. Okay, George says, I had a mystery client wanting to pay me an extra money above my quote to pay 4,000 to pay a previous homeowner for closing fees. George, no. That's a scam. Like, it's like the biggest scam. It's like the princes that are going to send, I'm going to wire you $15 million. And all I need you to do before I do that is wire me $12 million and you get to keep $3 million. It's a scam. Tell them to go to hell. Oh, good. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, a total scam, a mystery client. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. That was one of my huge worries. Yeah, um, and and it's it's a legitimate worry, right? Um, you you you, well, it's raining. Um, you hear and see things all the time, and and yes, it's it's a legitimate thing that's out there. And yes, should you think about it and be concerned about it? Yeah, I'm not, but you know, whatever. Um, thanks, Mike. I also promote the business on the Nextdoor app and it's brought quite a few jobs. Yeah. Nextdoor is a great place, um, to, uh, to promote and, and agreed. All right. Anybody else? I think I've hit all of the, uh, all the comments. Let's see. Oh yeah. Hide current comment. Sorry. Okay. What else do we have guys? Talk to me in here. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, then if you, if you guys don't have any questions, then I'm going to tell you a couple of the exciting things that we have been working on in Quote IQ. If you're not familiar with Quote IQ, that is the app um, and the desktop, the software that we have created, Justin Rogers and myself. Um, and uh, it's, in my opinion, it, it's, it's a phenomenal app. I use it every single day for my business. And I've got a business that, you know, prior to this, I was using a bunch of different pieces of software all combined together. And we, we decided we were going to do something about that. And because of that, we created over the past, you know, two years now, it's been, it's been live and out for over a year. 
And uh, we spent the year previous to that building and, and refining. And it's a continual evolution. But some of the cool things that we've offered is obviously there's the free trial that we have always had. There's the free version that you can use where you can, um, you know, download uh, all of your contacts. You can send estimates for free, invoices for free, collect payments, all for free, right? Um, but what we've just added is a bunch of add-on services. So say you have the premium version or the free version and you want to use the map measuring tool that's integrated with the quoting system. So you can pull it, the address up and you can go and you can measure out, you know, the driveway or the, if you're a lawn care guy, the lawn, or if you're doing fencing, right, you can measure linear footage of the fence and then you can send over and it, everything populates with your pricing and stuff. That is an, that's now an add-on that you can put in, um, you know, your free version or, or if you, you know, you want text automation and email automation, or you want to do mass email campaigns, like something like MailChimp or, or constant contact. Like we've got that now for a fraction of the cost. I mean, I'm looking like, I think $9 as an add on for email automation, email automation, in my opinion, is one of the greatest things that, um, I use in my business for marketing. Uh, someone, one of the guys was just asking about what to do for marketing. And the thing that I do is, uh, email automation. Now, if you guys watch my channel, you know that if you've ever signed up for anything or we're looking at pricing or interested in one of our training programs, you're going to get emails from us um, because emails work. I use it in my business all the time to generate, you know, generate business to get uh, our, our word out on whatever it is, whether it's a special, whether it's some some good quality information, some good information for the homeowner to help, you know, with whatever uh, that it's time for uh, their appointments coming up, whatever email automation, text automation that you can put into play. It's triggered by certain things. And then you never have to think about it again. If your customer gets an estimate, then guess what? That customer is going to put in, be put in your sequence that, you know, says, Hey, I noticed that you haven't made a decision yet. Um, please let me know if you've got any further questions. And another day later, Hey, just wanted to let you know. Um, I know people shop around, but, uh, we're given 10% off if you schedule today, you know, and you can do this until they, either schedule their appointment or they decline the estimate, then that removes them from there. Then when they schedule, you can set up a sequence where, you know, somebody is, uh, you know, they're like, okay, I'm on the schedule. Then they get an email that says, Hey, you're on the schedule for this date and this time. Then, um, uh, I do not recommend home advisor for anybody. The, um, you know, but so uh, it goes on and on. Uh, there's multiple triggers and multiple steps and, and, and it's an infinite number of emails and texts you can send, uh, which will keep you top of mind and in front of your customers forever and ever and ever. Amen. Okay. Let's see where we were. Uh, sorry, Mike, last question. I have all my hoses mounted on my truck bread. Okay, that's not a question, but that's cool. Um, truck bed hose reels would be perfect. That's cool. Um, I think that was what you were asking about. Mike, I uh, love you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, question, would you go for an enclosed trailer or open? I don't like enclosed trailers. Um, simply because of the wear and the tear on them. Enclosed trailers are exponentially more expensive and more difficult to build out for efficiency, and in my opinion. And with that being said, I like the ease and convenience of an open trailer, the cost of an open trailer, because they're going to need to be replaced. It is what it is. Bleach and water, uh, even if you do everything that you can do in order to protect the metal, it's still going to corrode it. So, I like uh, open trailers. <clears throat> uh, one more. Can I use a water tank as a water source? Yes. I don't, but it just depends on the machine that you're using. If you've got a small machine, then it's not going to pull. It won't be gravity fed. All my equipment is mounted on the truck bed except my pressure washer. I wanted to get an answer from a pro, but can I run my machine from my truck bed with it being mounted with without it being mounted down? Um, you can. I mean, as long as it's secure you definitely can run it. I mean, I would rather have it mounted or secured somehow in the truck bed rather than pulling it out and putting it back in and running hoses and all that. That's just sounds like a nightmare, right? Uh, truck mount is the way to go. Uh, without, can I use a water without a 12 volt system? It just depends on the machine. I didn't want to mount the machine in case I ever needed to move it for larger jobs. Well, if you've got enough hose on your hose reels and you're fine. 
Um, what's up, Chris? If anybody is interested, Chris, the striping guy, uh, and uh, Justin and myself are working diligently. And I say I am. I'm not really working on anything. Chris is the guy. But he he's putting together a striping course, which is another great add-on service um, for a, a pressure washing business. So if you guys will go over to Chris's channel, check him out and uh, sign up for uh, information on that course. And uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, in your experience, would I be able to use a 20 inch surface cleaner with um, I, a 20 inch is not going to be optimized for a 3.5 gallon per minute machine. Uh, I would stick with a 16 inch and then upgrade your uh, machine and your surface cleaner. You'll go a lot faster. Um, I don't recommend home advisor. I'm going for an enclosed trailer for equipment protection and as a mobile billboard. Yep. That's awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Um, how many county cities over should I door knock and pass out flyers? Uh, however willing, uh, however the, the distance that you're willing to travel to go make some money, make sure you're charging accordingly so that you're being compensated for your time and the miles. Does quote IQ have a Christmas light? Um, Mock up for houses. We do not. Yeah, you are. Ah, not really. You're the man. Dude, Chris, I was just going through all those emails that you sent me. Um, I think there was 15 of them and I left them unread. I have got um, this, this weird thing where I can't have unread messages in my text or my email box. Like it drives me insane. It's, and I'm not a, I'm not by any means um, OCD, but that just drives me nuts. And Chris sent me like, I think it was like 15 or maybe it was 14 emails that I need to pull out and, and input into this training program. And I've not done it yet, but I, I left them unread so I could go and easily find them, but it's just been driving me absolutely insane because I haven't put them in yet. Anyway, I, uh, I finally went through them, Chris. Can I send quote estimate to Amazon UK warehouse to manager? I don't know what that means. Can I send quote estimate to Amazon UK warehouse to manager? Maybe let me know exactly what you mean and I could probably help you. Hey, Mike, we appreciate your time and knowledge, man. Thank you, Softwash General. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks, Mike. I've been advertising on Google ads for about $15 a day. I've not received any calls yet. I started in March this year. Any advice or anything you think I'm doing wrong? Thank you. Okay, this is a phenomenal question, Morris. And the reason this is a phenomenal question is... I don't know where you're located. So Morris, tell me where you're located because that's going to answer a lot of questions um, or it's going to be able to allow me to talk intelligently specific to your, your, your Google ads at $15 a day. But let's say Morris lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Atlanta, Georgia, it's a booming metropolis, millions of people and the surrounding areas, even more. And of those mass amounts of people, you know, he's in Northern Virginia. Okay. Nova. No, I sold a franchise up in Nova. It was called Nova wash. Um, so if you're, we're just going to use Atlanta for an example. If you're in Atlanta and you want to run Google ads, you have to consider who else is running Google ads and how much they're willing to pay per day. Morris is only paying $15 a day, right? To Morris, depending on where he's at in his business, that may be a bunch of money. But if you are an established business, say uh, a business like mine that was in maybe in a large metro or in Morris's backyard, it doesn't matter. And I'm willing to spend $50 a day, $60 a day, or just more than Morris. Guess who's going to get more placement, more ads? I am. The guy that's spending the more money is. Morris isn't going to have much luck. And there are places that can help guide you in making these decisions on running ads. Now, I've never been a huge fan of paying people to run ads for me, but as things get more complicated, as technology evolves, sometimes it's better to outsource things. Footbridge Media, uh, they, they're a web designer. They also offer other services to their clients, one of which is Google Ads. The guys down there, Aaron is uh, the owner down there, not Aaron Parker from the Lean and Mean Academy, a different Aaron. Um, but Aaron is uh, a top-notch class act dude. 
They don't do my website. I've got no affiliation other than I think they're good guys. But Aaron will get on a call and analyze your market and he'll tell you, is it worth it? If you're only okay to spend $15 a day, save your money and spend it elsewhere because you're not going to get the eyeballs. You're not going to get the calls. So that's something to consider, Morris, is, is either up what you're willing to spend and find that sweet spot where you start getting calls or work organically on your SEO and, and you know, all of the things that you can do for your Google profile. That's what I would do. Um, okay. <clears throat> so something to think about. How much would you charge for roof soft wash, 1100 square foot home? Okay. Um, that's a great question. And I say that's a great question because it's a tough one to answer depending on your market, on how you're going to do it. For us, an 1100 square foot house, um, that's a little teeny itty bitty house. That's probably going to take us from the time we pull up to the time we leave, make sure everything looks good. Probably a 45 minute job, maybe an hour. And um, the bare minimum, our minimum charge just to show up is 250 but for a roof wash, our minimum charge is 500. And the reason that it's so high is because most people are unwilling, unable, or not capable of doing a roof wash, right? They don't have the equipment. They could mess it up. I just made a video the other day. A lady called us. It was a short format video. A lady called us. Uh, we gave her a price on a roof wash. Same scenario, just a little house, nothing special. It was a little bit bigger than this. It was a two story, like a, a duplex. And, um, uh, she said, yeah, yeah, we're going to go with somebody else. You're too expensive. That's fine. Awesome. A couple days later, she called me back and sent me pictures of uh, her roof, which somebody who was much cheaper came with a pressure washer and blasted the shit out of her roof and just totally tore it up like bad. Um, I drove by the other day and there is a roofing crew there now completely ripped off the entire roof. It was due anyway. A cleaning would have made it look a little bit better, but it was time. Um, but this, I think the, the, the horrible hack job that was done to the roof exacerbated the time frame and forced them to move forward with replacing the entire roof, which is monumentally more expensive than a soft wash. But you know, my roof pricing is, is, you know, that, that's, that's where I would be 400, 500 bucks. Um, you know, is probably what I would recommend to somebody if you've got the right equipment. Uh, thank you so much, Mike. This honestly helps so much because there's some questions that I can't find the answers for. Yeah. Um, hey, that's why I'm here. Uh, if you've got questions, throw them up and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but uh, yeah. I would definitely check out Footbridge Media. And if you do, um, tell them that uh, Quote IQ sent you, right? And uh, they'll give you a discount. I can't remember what it is, but you'll save uh, quite a bit of money um, over the course of a year. But man, it's so cheap. I, I don't remember what they charge per month, but it's it's like it's under like $190 or $180. And you get the best website that you can possibly get that's going to rank you. It's going to get you in the top three eventually. Uh, and sooner than if you were to do it yourself or work with somebody that's not in the industry, like these guys know what moves the needle and they've got the resources to point you in the right direction to get all the things that you need. Um, so that's that. All right, guys, I've been on for about 45 minutes and, um, I think, uh, I think we've answered a bunch of questions. So we'll give it a couple more minutes. If you've got any questions in here, please, uh, by all means, let me, um, that's funny. Um, it's funny. So my daughter just turned 20 on the 17th of October and she's in college. She she's home today because she had, uh, a doctor's visit. And like, when you get to that age, obviously you don't go to the pediatrician anymore, but she hasn't transitioned to like the big girl doctor. So she was, she went to the doctor and my, um, my wife went with her and she just sent me a picture of, of the pediatrician who is about my age with my daughter smiling. And he, he was the one that was like there the day she was born and came in, but I've got a 20, he'll be 22 in November, my son, but I'll never forget. We, my, my wife gave birth to him 
And that morning, this guy comes in and, and, you know, my son's 20. So I was super young. I was like 24 years old. Um, and this young guy comes walking in, you know, and when you're in the hospital, there are people coming in all the time, checking heart rates and baby, all, all that. This dude comes in and he picks up the baby and he kisses the baby. And like, I almost, I like, I almost jumped up and like, I was like, who, who is this? Like, I'm going to whoop your ass. You pick up my baby. and kiss. Like, I don't know who you are. You look like some kid. Well, it was a pediatrician. And now I'm looking at this picture and I texted my wife back. I said, who's that old man? It's crazy. So getting old sucks. <clears throat> okay. So that was a, probably something nobody wanted to hear. Nobody wanted to hear that, but yet I felt like I needed to share it with you guys. So I apologize for wasting your time. Thanks, Mike. Great advice as usual. Thank you. Uh, what's more important, your website or marketing or Google or what exactly? Denard, all of the above. If you do one, you're wrong. If you do two, you're wrong. You have to do all three. Um, you, 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 gotta, you gotta cast that net to catch all the fish. So that's what I'll say. What is this? Morris. Since $15 a day isn't really doing much on Google ads, that's roughly around $300 or so a month. Would you think it would be smart if I took that $300 and put it into door hangers and pens and just go door to door? <clears throat> um, yes, absolutely. I think that would probably be the best thing that you could do. For $300, you can get a ton of um, tactile marketing. I wouldn't do pens. Focus on door hangers or flyers or postcards. Um, make sure that you design them well because a poorly designed postcard is not going to do anything good for you. Um, I don't mind doing a lot of footwork since I'm not very tech savvy. The beautiful thing is you don't have to be incredibly tech savvy, right? There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of things you can do that that can, you know, kind of eliminate the tech savviness needed in order to promote the business. Um, so that's that. All right. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer this and then I'm going to hop off. Do you use SH when washing concrete? And the answer is uh, yes. We will do a typically either a pre or a post treatment if needed. And I think I answer that. Do you do it used before or while washing? You don't do it while you're washing. Apply it, let it soak. And this is if you've got organics, right? Like mildew or mold or algae or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> spray it, let it dwell, let it do its job. Let it start killing the, the organics that you're trying to remove. It's going to loosen things up. It's going to make the surface cleaning a lot easier. Do your thing, rinse it all off, and you're good to go. If you notice stripes, if you notice, um, you know, maybe... <clears throat> the the organics you can still see because concrete is porous. Hit it with a post treatment and uh, and just leave it and you'll be good to go. But definitely don't do your customers a disservice by not pre or post treating because the results while won't be immediately seen um, as as you as as time goes on and growth continues, you know because it will. It's going to come back. They're going to see the the imperfections of what we do if you don't. Um, if you don't do a, uh, a good surface cleaning or, or use a pre or a post treatment. Okay. That is it guys. I appreciate you watching and hanging out with me on this, uh, this beautiful Friday. I hope everybody had a great week and I hope that you have a phenomenal weekend and next week is prosperous for you. Check out how to wash. There will be a link in the description and the comment section. Also the Christmas lighting bootcamp. I put a link down there, 50% off and make sure to check out all the other awesome assets that we have with that, the contract for lighting, as well as all the marketing that you need. That's it, guys. Appreciate you. Wait, what antifreeze do I use? Any antifreeze is good. That's it. All right, Joey. Have a good one.